Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Zane Gonzalez, he's got this one teed up, and we are underway from First Energy Stadium. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. for the former Michigan State man, Le'Veon Bell. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It'll be a gain of 17 at a Pittsburgh first. It should go without saying that anytime you run the football well and gain a nice chunk of yardage, that means the offensive line did their job and did it really well. But let's give them a little more credit than that. Because all week long, offensive line meetings, they're going over adjustments, counters, when they when line shifts, all those things that go along with it. And yet, you still have to be physical. And that's what they did on the first play. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. A nice gain of 21 yards. I know we just saw a nice throw and catch, but how about the big guys up front that buying that time. time? Yeah, that's exactly what they did. They created time and allowed the space to happen, and it turned into a really nice play. They'll pitch it out to Bell. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Again, it's Bell. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Pretty good running there, nine yards. Sets up a third and one. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Try and run for it with Bell. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. And partner, in a lot of short yardage situations, you'll see the linebackers step up into the gaps, what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, to make sure they take away all spaces, all creases. That one worked really well for them. Now only needed a yard, instead went backwards. So a nice drive on the road. You come in, you take the ball down, you get three points. Yeah, points are a must on an opening drive, right? So they moved it down efficiently, got it done. I think that bodes well for their chances moving forward in this one.
first carry for Carlos Hyde. And this first play will get him back to the 25, but that's going to be in. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Slow, slow, slow. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Again, it's high. That he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. Third and long, it's Taylor. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Give him three on the play, and that's going to bring... up a fourth down on fourth down the Browns hand things over to the veteran Britton Colquitt to punt back deep for the Steelers Antonio Brown back with Charles Davis I'm Brandon Gauden the Browns with a football to begin quarter number two they are however facing a fourth down situation so on fourth down Britton Colquitt on to punt Back deep, Antonio Brown. Now Brown. A very nice job on the run back there. He'll get 23 yards all told. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. They'll go again with Bell. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Any team that runs the toss and runs it successfully, that means they win the battle on the edges. That means you seal the edge in order to let your back get to the corner. They got it done there for a very nice game. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Joe Schobert leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. On second down, here's Roethlisberger. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. 
Now Ben on third and long. And this one is incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. And the Browns getting set to go. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second and short. It's interesting because when I'm watching college football and I'm evaluating guys for the draft now, my list of fullbacks, pure fullbacks, it's a very short list. I'm probably evaluating more punters and kickers now than I am fullbacks, but it doesn't matter what you call the position, it's who you put there, and there we saw a completion. Taylor on target to Gordon for a Cleveland first. Taylor on first down, buying time to his left. Out to the left, he's got his tight end, Aikens. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Two minutes to play here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. Slow, slow, slow. Throwing again, it's Taylor. And some room to work. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Oh, Call so, it again so. is seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. First down now, but the clock continues to move. On first down, it's Taylor. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Second and ten now. It's Taylor. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. A first red zone opportunity for the Browns thus far. First and nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, 
Got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Taylor to throw on second down. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. David Njoku, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Browns are able to cash in for six. And while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead, it's still a lead, and that always feels good to a team. They'd love to take that into the lockers, but a little time left on that clock, so some work to do. I like that. I like how you're guarding against a letdown there. Are you looking forward? Coaching them up from right up here in the booth. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. and 10. It's Roethlisberger. The man open left side is Brown. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. down. It's Roethlisberger. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Travis Carey. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. After the interception, here's Taylor. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Second down, high. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And now they'll take a timeout defensively. After the second down play, they burn the timeout, making him sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. They run it again with high. Room here to run. And they're going to get this one up past the 25. So we've hit intermission. It's halftime. This is the NFL, and it's a presentation of EA Sports. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. Fielded about a yard deep. Shifts by it, and now running right through it. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. 
Bud Dupree in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. On second down, Taylor's throw incomplete. The Browns on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. From the shotgun, it's Taylor. Going back to Taylor, this time he's got him complete. And he gets this one up just shy of the 35 to the 34. That one goes for 24 yards. to the 33. That's going to go slow, as a slow. loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Slow, slow, slow. So statistically, both of these offenses see, have see, a see. rough time getting a running game going. See, see, but boy, see. what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on. Jordan loses the football. It's loose. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. They'll try and get the running game going with Bell. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action, hit them over the top. Now Roethlisberger. And that'll be incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Throw left side, complete. That's Bell. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and it'll be fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get them the first down. Brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And Boswell's kick is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So a decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvaged three out of it, but they inch a bit closer. Yeah, but still lots of time to go in this one. That's why you hear that clapping on the sidelines, <laughs> right? Hey, got some points. As you said, inching their way back in. Time left to go out and get that victory. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This will be taken short. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. 
Throwing now, Taylor on first down. Looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 47, and he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. They were looking for Johnson that time. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively of getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Now it's Roethlisberger. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Took till the second half, but finally a red zone opportunity here. They've got a first and 10 at the 17. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. Now Bell, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Le'Veon Bell taking it in from four yards out, and the Steelers are able to strike for six. Here's Roethlisberger, and it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off with great anticipation, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Boswell on now to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. Get a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. I think the last two plays really illustrate how difficult it is to game plan against this guy because you know he can throw the football, but how about his use of legs as well? What we call those broken plays, you can't account for them. Yeah, those plays, those two that you just mentioned, a microcosm really of how he can hurt you. They go play action now, Taylor. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Taylor able to find his big tight end in Joku for the Cleveland first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. First and 10.
They'll throw on first down with Taylor out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. On second down, Taylor. Going deep here for Landry. And this is going to be intercepted. Snags it for the pick. And he'll take it all the way up near the 30-yard line. Landry, the intended target. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners who have had the receivers on lockdown. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Hey, hey, hey. Let's go, let's go. Bye, bye. They'll start the drive with a carry by Bell. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's going to be out of bounds right at the 40. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. Tackle made there by Miles Garrett. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Uh, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Michael Kendricks, the linebacker, there to get him down. The recipe's pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hold on to the football and keep the clock ticking. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. Set. Blue 30. First carry for James Conner. And down to the 36-yard line here. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. A give to Bell. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only a yard on the pickup, so from a good situation on second and two, it's now third and one. Solid, five down. The give is to Bell. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play, and that's going to lead them to fourth down. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll run it with Bell. And this 
is going to be nowhere close. Needed some inches and ended up losing yardage. Le'Veon Bell stops short of the line to gain. And this Browns defense stands tall. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and ten. They'll look to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle, kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Taylor incomplete on first down. Here's second and ten. Back to throw. A quick hitter complete. It's Gordon. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. Back to throw. That is caught by the former Gator Antonio Callaway. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A gain of 19 and picking up the first. He's back to throw. Escaping the pressure right. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And as they say, that's a no-no. Got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield. So the illegal forward pass also costs him a down, and now it's second and long. He'll look to throw. Screenplay, Johnson. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. It'll be a pickup of eight on the screen, and it sets up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. The Browns on third down. They've been near perfect, four for five to this point. This is third and seven. Taylor to throw. And this is caught. He hits Landry. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. seconds remaining. He was trying to get it to his tight end, David Njoku. And that'll bring up second down. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. Here's Taylor. So for those of little faith, guess what? It got done. They now have the lead with that touchdown this late in the contest. I wonder if that was a play they were holding or a play that they just knew would work from past experience. Well, I just saw it in their eyes on the sideline before starting that last drive, and they did. You're right. They got it done. Looks like they're going to be the winners. Now 
it's Taylor. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. So you're right there, but obviously the clock is not your friend. How do you handle this situation? You're thinking two plays. One to get yourself in position for the second one, whether you're able to get into field goal range or you have to try another deep pass, another Hail Mary. But you're trying to get the first one to a receiver, get out of bounds, and give yourself a chance to set things up for an easier shot at it. We'll see if they can do it. Might be easier said than done. Roethlisberger to throw. Goes underneath for Bell. And they'll mark him down right around the 9, just shy of the 10. And a timeout is called. So now you're looking at probably just one final play from back in their own territory. And they're going to need a miracle. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves them with a very manageable second and one. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Now a desperation throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by the Michigan man, Javiel Peppers. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Well, we were on hand for a fun and entertaining game here. Coming down really to that last play. Great job defensively to get the pick and seal it. And we know that every play during a game matters. You're never sure which one's going to be one of the key ones. But at the end of the game, when you analyze it, three, four, five plays are going to be the ones you focus on. And that last play was one of them. The last shot had to...